Hello, at this point of the early access, I think it's pretty safe to say that the quest will remain the same, some things might change like the stats or the equipment of these characters, but the quest will remain more or less the same. So to get Knorr or the Harbinger, which is also known as the third daughter I think, or anyway, she's a daughter of the Great Mother in the Heart, you need to finish all of the Department of Justice fights. Talus fight is very very tough because you are going to face endgame characters specifically designed for combat. Now, first of all, let's go over some basic things. Number one, you cannot take Knurl and the Harbinger, you have to only take one. If you take one, you have to kill the other. There is also a very complex set of annoying relationship and well, it's just complicated. So if you take Jed with you and you try to kill Knurl, Jed will join Knurl and you have to kill Jed as well to kill Knurl and then the Harbinger will join you. If you go to the heart and you have Jed with you, Jed will say he will not live until you kill Ismael or handle the business with Ismael. Which is pretty annoying because that means even if you kill the Harbinger, you cannot go back to Knurl to recruit him. But even so, Knurl and Harbinger are not able to enter the heart, which is again annoying because you cannot use them in that specific portion of the game. So, to re recapitulate, if you kill Knurl, you'll have to leave Jed at home. He might get upset, we'll test that out if he gets upset or not. I didn't test it out before I started recording. If you kill Harbinger, you have to do it without Jed, or if you do it with Jed, you have to do the main mission as well. If you leave the heart, if you for example take Faith, Matthias, Evans and your main character and you go over there, kill Harbinger and leave, when you arrive to another location, it will actually warn you beforehand, before leaving because it will say you haven't burned down all of the bridges, but you have to get the fuel cell. I'm not sure if that will change over time, but for now it doesn't seem to do anything, but I'm not willing to risk it, seeing as the developers like this really stupid, uh, complicated things where you cannot leave an area once you get there anyway. So if you go with the Jed over there, you cannot leave until you finish the Ismail business, and you can also not really leave until you get the fuel sir, once you go there. You can go there to get better equipment for the lower mission control, but it's not really worth it because of all of these complicated things I mentioned. So yeah, to get Knurl you have to kill Harbinger, to get Harbinger you have to kill Knurl but don't tell Jed or he'll fight you. And if you go to kill Harbinger don't take Jed with you or if you take him be prepared to fight for the rest of the... to complete the main objective. Also, uh, you can go with Faith and then you can leave but again it, it's super complicated. So let's go find Knurl, sorry for the very long winded explanation but... I think people will be very very disappointed if they do this the wrong way or if they realize they cannot live once they get there or they cannot kill a character with Jed in the party or something like that. So he'll be in operations. He's actually quite in a bit of an annoying spot. So he's over there. So first let's kill him. Leave him alone and then he disappears, which is the annoying part because he vanishes if you choose to leave him alone. Again, which is man. These developers, these developers, oh, so annoying. You cannot leave Jed unless you go to the armory. So, yeah, that's not really an option. So, before we do anything, let's just remove all of his armor. The developers will probably patch this out so you cannot remove all of his gear, but for now, let's try it like this. What are you doing here? He has me to kill you. Why does he want you dead? Personal. Are you asking me to kill her? And here is can, where we can decide to help him. Fine, tell no, you can go. That basically ends this entire interaction. As you saw the last time, and it disappears, and you have to. Again, you can basically lose everything in this little stupid encounter. And by that, I mean lose the content you'd be missing, and possibly a companion. Okay, we are ready. Now, he's not very tough, but he can be very annoying to deal with. Oh, my main character is somewhere over here. I cannot see him, but he's surely over here somewhere. Anyway, doesn't matter.
Oh, I guess we're over there. Eh. You can be kind of hard to kill. So again, based on his chances, he's actually a very good fighter. Based on his chances, he can be super hard to kill. You saw that. That was super annoying. So let's use the steams. Short burst, long burst. Staggered to pieces. Get a little closer. That's why I like my tire so much. He's so strong and basically almost unkillable. So he staggers, so that means you have a better chance of aiming for his leg. Cripple, perfect. He doesn't have a lot of ammo for. Hey! For the pistol, so he ran out of ammo probably in the middle of the fight. Let me see, I guess I can go for a bullseye. Yeah, that worked. Can he have minus two? Yeah, whatever. Just reload and let, let Matthias do the hard work. Dead. Now, as you can see, he doesn't have a lot of ammo, he doesn't have a lot of loot, so this has changed. Probably at some point he had much better stuff. He has the energy pistol, which is a very good pistol, but the ammo cost multiplier is very high. So that means you need three power cells to shoot once, which is not very good. That's from Evans, by the way. I think it's from Evans. No, I mean from... Uh, Jed. He had the old ranger and the energy pistol. He reminds me of that Archangel. Uh, I've, Dark Angel who is on the run with one energy pistol and one uh, Walter pistol. This gear is not so interesting. This is again from Jed. I guess he has this. This implants. Which are not really interesting. So now we have to go to the heart, but if you go to the heart, you'll get a little warning if you back down. Anyway, the goal of the video is to show everything and that's what we'll do. Doesn't really matter because you can also ask your faction to give you a power cell, you'll lose some standing with them. I think, let me see, let me see the church 19, I think you lose 7 standing with your faction if you ask for the power cell if you fail. And the harbinger will be over here. Her stats are not very well designed, I think she is more like a support type of deal. Even though she, oh, of course she can deal more damage than your other companions. The details, why not? And this is the funny part. So she doesn't actually tell you anything. Now what? So we have to go to the priestess, tell her about that. And then you can recruit the Harbinger. We have a very long winded, winded way of doing it. But okay, let's try it. I think I'll get Knorla. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'll get him. I might even come here with Faith instead of Jed so I can... <clears throat> I can uh, get rid of some of the tedious stuff. On one of your outcasts. Did you not claim his weapons and armor? Why are you doing this? The former fur daughter, oh so she's the former fur daughter. The best thing is left to serve a lolly outside like yourself. Yeah, okay, accept. I guess you can also refuse, but again, the quest decisions in this game don't make sense because you're basically missing a lot of content just by refusing something that you don't even know what you are refusing. So you have your companions, but Matthias or the other companions you can get from the factions are a very very big upgrade. And the next one will be Knorr or the Harbinger. Okay. 
I really make you work for this. They won't be happy about that. Uh, before we do anything, let's go back to the heart and let's get away from there because, like I said, sometimes it feels like the game is purposely trying to annoy you. I guess you have the option of trying to do this again and again. It shows you like that because usually when you leave, that means you failed the objective. I guess we shall show. We should show her inventory first. She has the better gear out of the out of the two of them. Well, in case you like blue, there it is. For the armor, this is nothing special. And for tactical vest, this is actually a pretty good tactical vest if you can wear it. And probably the third daughter's helmet is the thing that you like the most about all of this stuff. As you can see, it has accuracy aimed, thermal vision 85, resistant to toxic, optical, and also neural. Which is amazing, it's a very very good helmet. Energy rifle is the same as yours. I mean the one you get from the armory is the same, exactly the same. She has a motor and a spinal implant, she can have another one, which probably would be ocular. Now for her stats. She's a mutant so she has one regeneration, one stat healing and toxic resistance plus 75. Which is kind of weird because she already will have more than 100. If you add the helmet on top of it. Her daughter. So she gets an experience bonus. 30 plus neural resistance. Also, she doesn't have a lot of charisma. So her neural resistance will not be that great. Let me see. So it's only 40. So even if she's wearing that helmet plus her 30 plus over here. It's not good. Initiative plus four, so she gives everyone plus four initiative, which is kind of nice, but mm. she also has Master Blaster, so that means she's basically tailored to use an energy rifle, which is not really feasible at this point of the game because unless you are playing with the Master Trader, you will not have enough money to buy all of that ammo. A sharpshooter, which is nice, opportunities, which is not so good, evasion, which is not so good, slow metabolism, which is not so good. As for her stats, as you can see, she can use bladed or a little bit of blunt, but not much pistol. But her main skill is in rifle, so she has 16 rifle. She will be able to level up to 6 pretty fast, so I can give her the rifleman kit, which will make it much, much easier. Or you can probably give her critical thinker. Let me see, which means perception of 6, which she has. She also has a lot of dexterity, but let's go over this in order. So she has critical strike evasion. So she's basically built for combat, right? Right. What was the problem? 18 action points. Evasion is 70. Initiative 54, which is one of the highest. 54 plus uh, from the party. It's kind of funny how she buffs everyone. So as you can see, initiative will be 12. Because of him and the her daughter. Reaction is 50, but the critical chance is only 30%, so as you can see that's not very good. She also has some biotech computers electronics, you can probably get an extra tag. With educated. But that's probably not going to be worth it unless you want to make her sneak or use electronics. Maybe electronics, but this is not really that good. Plus she is hated by the protectors, which might play into the later parts of the game. I mean, we are hated by the protectors. I mean, that's something I never really thought of. Maybe some characters will be hated by certain faction. Again, a certain faction. Again, I'm not sure if this will play a bigger role or not. Probably next time I shouldn't do that. So that's how you get Harbinger or the former third daughter. Let's reload all of this nonsense. So let's go to the armory. Let's see if Jed is still upset if you kill him and if he doesn't see it. Yeah, dismiss Jed. Then let's go to mission control again. I mean, we might have more options over here, right? 
By the way, this is pretty... How should I put it? Going really off the... I hate it when they move that around. This is really going out of your way to see these options because you need to know so much about the game that at some point you'll become really, really annoyed with it. So I guess if Jet doesn't protest, we'll attack him straight away. Who are you? What are you doing here? Yeah, just start. Ah, that's pretty high grace chance. Okay, I hate when that happens. What? Okay, that's something I didn't really see coming. Yeah, I guess you get to see his combat expertise first hand. Come on, one more third. Huh. He didn't kill Evans, that's a surprise. Let's get his stuff. I guess his armor is pretty good. The pistol is also pretty nice, but it, I don't see how you can have enough uh, energy cells at this point. I guess you need to have more money somehow, or don't waste it on stupid things. So, is Jed okay with this? <laughs> ah, probably he is. Okay, so it is okay with that. If you don't have him along with you when you do that, can it? So let. Basically, we have to choose to do that for Ismail. If you try to leave without handling this, he will leave. he will protest, and then at some point he will leave. Let's go to the armory and let's see if he's there. Man, there are so many quest triggers and so... By the way, let, let me show you how you can do this. Wait for Matthias to return. Three days did you get a fuel cell. Insert the fuel cell. And then you have to go into hydroponics to get something else, but it's okay. And we lost seven... Um, Standing with them. Go back to mission control. Actually, no, the armory. And as you can see, yeah, he's gone forever. He's super upset with you. I cannot believe what you have done. Anyway, for the purpose of the video, now we'll go and kill Harbinger. Harbinger. And we'll show off his stats. Kill her. I open total resolution. If they're final, kill the helping jar or kill him not. So I guess this is one of those fail. I don't know what to do in this case if you want to kill him again because he's not here anymore. Maybe he appeared in another. Anyway, I don't think too much about it. Like I said, for the sake of the video, I'll just have to kill the Harbinger with Jed as well. But normally you would probably have to take Faith with you so we don't fail the mission. And again, depends on what part of the story you are. Without thinking too much about it. Probably it's... See, this is the quest to enter Ismail Warehouse. The, the warehouse fight is kind of annoying because you have a lot of enemies and guess what? Grenades will fly all over the place, so you better make sure you are Im immune to most of those. He sends his regard.
By the way, where or can it be detected the first turn we we use that? The guards are not too tough, but she as you can see is already invisible. Right. Okay. Just a little graze. Yeah, that is SMG guy is pretty terrible. And by terrible I mean too strong. And she will use her energy rifle, of course. But some of the energy rifle is not as dangerous as the <laughs> energy pistol. I probably want to move over here. Wake everyone up. The arms. Come on, stop that. And this is the annoying part. Well, I guess we have to kill the guard first. <laughs> that looks so vicious. Gives the ze zero chance of grazing. Probably head is the best option over here. Stagger than stun. 22, yes. Let's apply healing to poor Evans. Okay, she's out of cover. Yeah, well, like I said, it doesn't really matter because this is a little harder just because of the damage of the energy rifle, and that will be the case for most of the game. Hmm. I guess now he's in the smoke. Probably we should do a full burst. And there's going to be a lot of grazes, but also a lot of staggers. She's all, by the way, she's out of ammo already, in case you don't understand why it's like this. Yeah, good miss. I like it when you miss so much. She's not too dangerous with a dagger, with a knife. Yeah, let's go for the long burst. Uh, yeah, you have to fight the guards until you finish everything. Oh, how I love that graze. You better hurry, I'm trying my best. Well, anyway, Knorl is supposed to be a replacement for Evans. Again, I'm not playing very well, I'm just trying to rush through this. I'm not sure which one she is. Ah, probably you can look at the video. Oh, this is her, because she has a spinal and a motor cortex. And if you kill the guards, you get much better loot, in my opinion, because you get the energy rifle which you can sell. I don't think you'll have two energy rifle users. You also get the helmet, which is great. The enforced, reinforced tactical vest, which is also pretty good. Six to everything, plus the Granger coat if you need it. Uh, I guess the, the other stuff is not too bad either. And now let's go into the mission control. Jed will... Yeah, bye bye Jed. Jed will say bye bye. This is how... Complicated everything is to recruit a single companion. And I... I think I went through all of the options, but I must 
Probably missed one or two. But he's worth it. When you, once you see his stats, you'll see he's worth it. He's a good replacement for Evans. The problem with Evans is you have to build him for rifles. But even if you build him for rifles, he'll not really get... He'll not get so many good things either. I mean, probably the big game hunter, the rifles, and maybe one one. Again, it really depends, but he's not really built for combat, that's the main point. Okay, we're stepping into his office. We have one spare... Spare room for you. Okay, so... You saw his gear, it's not very good. It also doesn't have anything on his energy shield. Scaff element again. The loot for him is super bad. So the same mutant perk, outcast, which means more critical damage, evasion plus 20 and regen plus 1. So that means regen 1 and 1, that's 2 regeneration. And you can also give him a heart, which would mean 3 points of regeneration. I don't remember if you get 2 points if you overclock the heart, but probably you get. So that would, that would mean you can put 4 regeneration on him. Again, I'm not sure. And he also has the subdermal armor. That which is great as well. His Master Blaster, Fast Drawing, Tough Blasted Armor Dwarfer, so he can wear armor and he's also Critical Thinker. Now the funny part over here is you might think, well, there's no character that has everything. Yes, again, it's a character that has everything. So, he has Hit Points, 55. He has Action Points, 17, which is quite nice. He has 70 Evasion with his current gear. He has 39 critical hit chance, which is pretty big, and again, this is with basic gear. You can level him up pretty fast, as you can see. I will give him big game hunter if I choose to take him. If you compare this two well, with Evans and Knurr. Yeah, same action points, but I think... What about his implants? I think he can take one more implant, which will probably be... I'm not sure, probably hard. Yeah, his stats are so good, he has only two tech skills, but as you can see it's pistol and critical strike. He can also use bladed weapons if you really really want him to do it. He can also use rifles if you really really want him to do it. I mean, my character which has been using rifles since the beginning of the game has 108. This guy has 140 just because he's so good with them and he hits a lot of shots. You can even switch into a rifle. He does have uh, plenty of strength to do it. So the recoil control is 12. 36 recoil control, so that's why he's so good. So I don't know. Knoll is kind of like the. He can be the best at everything that is related to combat. His other skills are not so good, but he starts with 3 in sneaking. 4 3 4. He also has 5 in evasion and 5 in armor, which is pretty good at this point. So armor handling is 24 because of his stats is 6. Why is it 6? Because of his stats. His strength is 7. So does it anyway, doesn't matter. Hits. Okay, so that's 6. Skill. Well, I guess because of the skill, I don't know, it doesn't make sense because he has 5 armor and 12 armor handling from the skill, so... Yeah. I guess that's how it's calculated. Anyway, the point is that 24 armor handling is kind of enough to wear the heaviest armor. Not the heaviest, heaviest, but some heavy armors. So yeah, he can wear even the damage riot officer armor, which he doesn't really need because if you add up his other armors with what he had, this one six and three. So he basically has the same, almost the same armor as the other ones that don't really equip that. Okay, I don't know. It seems to me like some characters are much, much more overpowered, so even if you give him a rifle, he'll still be very, very good at his job, but he can replace Evans perfectly, especially if you give him the Redeemer and the 5 
shooter because you can double tap and use finding on this so much more efficiently. His record control is only 4, but his record control is already 12. And if you give him a spinal a spine implant, and if you give him the record control chip, plus the armor handling, so that's 4 recoil control and 6 armor handling, he can wear very heavy armor and he can shoot double shot or triple fanning. I don't know, he has so many good things going for him. And when he levels up, you can also give him Pistolero if you really, really want it. But I don't feel like he needs it because reaction is not so good. Accuracy is pretty nice. Critical chance 1% for each skill level. So with Pistolero and Pistol. 7. So that would put him at 46 critical chance. I think you can, with the pistol stats, we can reach 50% critical chance, which means you'll crit almost every turn. Because you'll shoot two, two times or three times, which is going to be amazing. This pistol is also very, very good, as it has high reaction and high penetration. I don't know, it's just a great character. Sorry about the video being so long-winded, but I just wanted to make sure I explore everything in much, much better detail. And give you more options and give you more insight on the character on itself. You can just use the timestamps. Bye.